Sometimes the smallest things can have a massive effect. Something you might think you never noticed was missing could be a pillar that your entire life rests on without you even knowing it. For instance, a large percentage of the food plants we eat every day require the intervention of tiny pollinators to produce food without these seemingly insignificant creatures, our survival would be on the line. But is there something more diminutive still that even the bees rely on for their health? And if so, how do we support that even smaller thing to protect all of us? Let's look closely. This is ASU. We can do a lot of things to try to stay healthy. We might exercise, eat foods that are good for us, get enough sleep, and avoid things that are toxic to our bodies. But what we don't always realize is that those habits don't just help us stay healthy. They also help keep important bacteria in our bodies healthy. That's right, bacteria in our bodies. You might be saying yuck, but some bacteria are our body's unsung heroes. Without them, we would not be able to live. They help protect us from illness and help us digest certain foods. Imbalances in some of our bacteria can increase our risks of health problems. Now, our relationship with bacteria isn't unusual. Other animals also need bacteria to stay healthy. One of these animals has researchers a buzz. And that's because it involves honeybees that are also very important to humans. Right, those buzzing bees are responsible for pollinating most of the crops that we eat. Without them, we would be unsure how to make enough food. But honeybees have been getting sick and their populations have been decreasing. One of the tools we've used to try to help bees fight off illnesses is to give them antibiotics like you might take if you were really sick with a bacterial infection. But what if giving antibiotics to bees does more harm than good? Ask a Biologist, a program at Arizona State University, looked into some research by scientists studying bacteria that lives inside the gut of honeybees. The researchers studied bees that were given antibiotics versus those that were not, and the bacteria that survived in the guts of both groups. They also followed those bees to see which ones lived longer, and they tested whether one group was better off at fighting bad bacteria than the other. The results were surprising. It turns out that not only did some antibiotics kill some of the important bacteria in bee bellies, but removing those bacteria may have caused early death of some of the bees as well. The antibiotics also made the bees more likely to be infected with really bad bacteria that can kill them. So what's the trick to helping bee colonies? Well, it certainly isn't to treat them with antibiotics. And without this research by scientists, we wouldn't know that using antibiotics is making colony die-off worse. This is part of the scientific process that includes testing and sometimes rethinking the way to handle a problem. The next step is to look for other solutions, maybe using more natural methods to support good bee belly bacteria. Say that fast three times. And you know what? It might help us learn a thing or two about keeping our own belly bacteria healthy. Even though they're small enough to shoo away with one hand, we rely on bees to make sure we have enough vegetables and fruits to eat. And even though they're too small for us to see with our unassisted eyes, the bacteria in the bees' bellies, and in our own bellies, are part of the cycle of nutrition too, helping us to fight off more dangerous microbes and to digest our food. The smallest things might be able to make some of the biggest impacts, so we'd better be careful how we treat them. This was ASU, and thanks for watching.